Okay, just like I promised. It, you know, uh, for Sunday Fun Days, half of that will be me recording things to put on the channel throughout the week. So first up is Soulbound, Issue 1, by Paula. Miss Paula, you did a great job on this. Yes. Yeah, mainly, I get where she's coming from now as far as YA stuff is concerned. This is... It has some darker moments, but it has very light moments. The artwork matches with, you know, the more kind of fantastical nature of uh, her setting. Uh, yes, yeah, she does go the route of where it looks like a, the main le le you know, leading lady will help heal the the um, her male counterpart, along with the male counterpart providing something that, you know... The, the lady is missing. Oh, look, it's some some traditional uplift on each side, you know, because you know men and women can be a team. This is possible. It's still possible. Um, in fact, it kind of has like a Alice in Wonderland kind of quality in some ways, where you know, <laughs> Isaki before it was Isaki, I guess, <laughs> where she she gets sucked back into the realm where she was originally from, which I did enjoy that aspect even in Twelve Kingdoms, you know. Yoko is originally from the Twelve Kingdoms, but got kicked over to our side. This is kind of like a reverse in some ways, but it's also similar in others. Uh, but unlike Yoko, uh, our leading lady here is a lot more likable in the beginning <laughs> to to be uh, somewhat blunt, you know. <laughs> and likability is always a factor. Uh, yes, it does have some aspects of where the the stepmom is a cankerous kind of uh, mm, a Karen kind of person. Yeah, th we'll leave it at that because <laughs> I don't know how bad badly cursing would uh, <laughs> come into effect with this series. But yes, uh, step step stepmom is um, ridiculous. And I do like the fact that uh, Paula did make her stepdad like a kind of a little bit of a military background, you know, brought me in on that aspect because as an army brat, you know, I'm, I was kind of like a dad was there when he could be, but like the first ten years, it was pretty, it was pretty rough, even with just the phone calls every week, you know. Because I genuinely missed my dad. And in the, in this character, well, she doesn't have her mom. And then, you know, of course, the dad is taken out of the picture. So, yes, even though it has the trope of, like, dead parents, um, even if there's a handful of tropes where I'm not as engaged in, um, with issue one, you know, Paula pretty much sets up everything that needs to be set up without overabundance of word vomit like Bendis. Like just a handful of words just to get the whole point across. Which I can understand why she goes on about that on Twitter. You know, like, make sure to showcase the art. You can still have dialogue and everything, but don't have a overabundance of, of stuff cluttering the page. Let the reader or viewer see what's offered. And you can even put in setting cues by what's around the character. You know, so, you know, it actually, this thing kind of pretty much reminded me of Narnia in a good way, you know, because some people do try to do Narnia in a bad way, like the Golden Compass stuff. <laughs> but no, yeah, it, if you're looking for something that will genuinely appeal to a, a teenage girl who just wants a more fanciful kind of last unicorn adventure then, yeah, pick pick up Soulbound. You'll enjoy it. Um, and even though my main wheelhouse right now is, you know, more uplifting kind of aspirational superhero kick, this is very aspirational in a way, too. You know, um, <sighs> she does face some challenges, and I can see the extension of those challenges going into issue two, but as far as just a, just by itself, issue one sets up what it needs to. It sets up the tone. It sets up the characters. It sets up the world. You can jump right into it. Um, and even if it's not starting with it, like in media res, 
it gives just enough you know, information to keep the reader going along. And that's really all you need for a comic book. It, you don't have to make some grandiose statement. You can just have simple fun. A lot of comics have forgotten this. Just have simple fun. And the only reason why I'm kind of describing things the way I am right now is because I don't want to spoil too much of the story. Um, just because I think people will genuinely enjoy it, especially if you are looking for something, you know, more lighthearted. In some ways. I mean, granted, losing both parents is a detriment to any kind of person's development because, you know, in most stories, the parents are kind of like the bedrock, which is why I do like some older tales uh, from, from Dead IP Land. Uh, but again, like I've said before, even if you like older stuff, buy it pre-owned. You know, uh, you can still enjoy the old stuff, but support local businesses by buying it pre-owned. Yeah, th th that's my short little message of the day. Hmm, what what else stood out with Soulbound? Here, let me pause it for a moment, and I'll check my notes. I liked how both you know our leads basically could see each other, kind of like in a you know in their dreams. It, it, it's, um, yes, it is a little bit corny, but I love myself some good corn. Um, <laughs> and you can see, kind of, like, just within a few images, how both these characters are growing up a little bit. They're, they remain aware of each other in a way, but also through with the way her mother ended up in our world, it get, adds just a bit of mystery to that just enough to hook you and then even though it isn't ex isn't really explained you know within like the first issue you know it's something that's kind of like you know the red bull chasing the unicorns into the ocean kind of thing where you'll probably get more of the context for it later um and I honestly, most of the time, I'm a big sucker for, you know, that one true love kind of like, you know, they're linked, which is why I like the little red ribbon part in the earlier um, pages, where it's like kind of like the red ribbon of fate tying these two characters together. I've always been a sucker for that. So, so Subi. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and plus, um, when the stepmother has, you know, her mother's... Uh, amulet it's like bitch that's not yours mm -mm, mm -mm, you give that back <laughs> god <laughs> you know even though it, it is a a well-known trope you know sometimes just having like a abject like um uncomfortable relationship with step parents you know it, it, it's a way to get people to care a bit more even in the beginning so <laughs> Yeah, it's like oh my god, she. <laughs> it's like you you don't get to you don't get to wear that that jewelry like that's not yours, and it's the fact that it's also kind of like a special amulet in more ways than one. Y yeah, it's like you give that back. Mm -mm. Bad stepmother. Yeah, because even with stuff like Cinderella, when I when I read the the old school Cinderella, it's like yeah. It's a way you can basically pour all your, um, like, you go get them. You go, because sometimes you can convert the stepmother figure, and sometimes you can't. So we'll see what happens with this. We'll, we'll see if they manage to convert the stepmother. And honestly, by the facial expressions, <laughs> you could tell that, that she wants to go off on this stepmother, but doesn't really know how she can accomplish that. And uh, she has this genuine discomfort of, like, the stepmom is kind of like one of those kind of trophy wives. She's like a clout chaser. And, you know, she's probably living off of her, her husband's good name and reputation and stuff like that. But behind the scenes, she's an absolute troll. You know, it's just the feeling I got from looking at these pages. It's like, oh my god. But then again, you know... <laughs> um even w most stuff that I read as a, a young girl, it, it was basically set up to where, they, like, like, yes, this is the obvious hero. Here's their obstacles. But they didn't have too much, like, internal troubles. They, 
they pretty much knew who they were in a way or at least fundamentally like what their their moral limits were and the things like that so i get a, vi- a vibe of that from this comic book you know it's miss it it's basically most modern stuff is missing that fundamental aspect of like genuine moral choices you know and having the hero or heroine come up against those moral choices and do the right thing essentially so yeah if you're missing that out of old comics you know just genuine heroism and you want something that your daughter can read and it's not it's not filled with um anita bake level horror and ikea like no it's just a more of a traditional fanciful kind of um fairy tale-esque setup that i think more people should enjoy because we, we got to heal the YA stuff as much as anything else. So that's what I'm going to try to do on the channel. Have a good day.